Hello everyone and welcome back to another Med Boys video. My name is Naman and today we'll be going through a full Kars passage to help you improve your score on testing. Let's get into it. Today, we'll be using one of the practice passages offered by Jack Weston, which is an amazing website that contains thousands of free passages. One big reason that a lot of pre-meds use this for Kars practice is that its interface is very similar to the actual MCAT. On the top right, you can see the time that you take, which you can start and stop. You can also flag questions for review. On the top left, you can see the highlight function, which is useful for picking out important information. I didn't use it during my crash practice since I became too focused on what I wanted to highlight versus actually understanding the passage. However, for the purpose of this video, I'll be highlighting some important words and phrases to make it easier for you to follow along. You can also see the strike through tool, which you can use to visually eliminate any information you don't want to pay attention to. Now, let's get started. From the first sentence, we can get a general idea of what the passage's focus will be. Based on the information provided, it seems that the author will be focusing on how more working class people were employed by the pop cultural and media industry and how this started in the late 50s to 60s. The next sentence starts with this was due to, which means that it will serve as an explanation for why more working class people were employed by this industry, which is the increased fragmentation of the class system and the rise of the working class entrance to university. The last sentence explains the effect of more working class people in the pop culture and media industry because it starts with this led to. The effect ends up being an altered perception of working class culture. The second paragraph introduces a location, Manchester, and how music changed the way it was perceived by people, from undesirable to cool, exciting, and creative. The third sentence explains why this happened. Its working class culture was embraced by the city. The sentence after that mentions an example of how the working class culture was embraced, indicated by the phrase, for instance. The author explains how joy division which, can, which we can deduce is a band because they create sounds, used industrially used to create exciting sounds. The author then goes on to say that through similar bands and techniques, Manchester became globally recognized as a pop cultural city from the late 1980s onwards, which signals a forward movement in the time period from 1950s to 1960s in the final paragraph. Based on the phrasing of the final sentence, we can tell that the author will elaborate what impact Manchester's new reputation had on the city itself, which was the creation of new jobs and pop cultural consumption spaces. Moving on to the third paragraph, the use of the word however indicates some sort of contrast. The contrast in this case was that Manchester's reputation became frozen once it was established, meaning it has been recognized as a pop cultural city associated with the working class as opposed to the new city center professionals and multiculturalism. The fourth paragraph proposes two explanations for why Manchester's reputation has not changed. These are probably very important, so we need to pay extra attention to them. The first reason is that cultural industries didn't attract women and people from black and minority ethnic communities, which boils down to a lack of representation of cultural diversity. The author then goes on to say that some inroads or efforts that have been made to associate with the cultural industries by working class men, but since there's no diversity in the type of working class individuals that approach the industry, this results in cultural products not being as engaging as they really should be. We can decipher this by the phrase, this in turn. The second explanation is that Manchester city center has become expensive and it's similar to what happened with a location in New York called Soho. The following sentence states in both locations, pop cultural entrepreneurs are driven out of an area they made attractive due to the forces of capital following closely behind. This might seem a little confusing, but thankfully the sentence after that makes it clear what the author's point is. The artists that gave Manchester its reputation can't live there, so they leave. That sentence is really all we need to take from this paragraph. The sixth paragraph talks about how property developers have been taking down the important monuments that added to Manchester's cultural and creative landscape, like the Hacienda and Affleck's place. The original population of Manchester has now been pushed out by the gentrification process, which just means that the wealthy people are moving in. Since the original population is not there, that's why the author says Manchester is no longer a working class city. 
The final paragraph sums up everything nicely. The author starts by explaining how Manchester has become the very same thing as working class we're laughing at, southernized. For the purpose of this passage, we don't actually need to know what being southernized means, but we can tell from the author's tone that it does have a certain negative connotation since the population saw the South as the butt of their jokes. The author then goes on to say that the working class people seen in popular TV shows, which are part of the media, are not actually in Manchester's city centre anymore. Despite that, Manchester is still associated with the working class culture instead of the more 21st century culture. Now that we've gone through the passage thoroughly, let's move on to the questions. The first question is, the passage would be most appropriate in the collection of Articles 4. The options are scholars studying working class politics, historians of urban culture, students of music history, and architects interested in the fate of old buildings. As we've said in multiple videos, there are always two obvious wrong answers, so let's identify those. Although the passage does mention music, music history is not the primary focus of this passage, since it wasn't explained in great detail. Therefore, we can cross that option out. Similarly, old buildings like the Hacienda are mentioned, but we are not provided with more information about their architecture. Now we can narrow the choices to two options, studying working class politics and historians of urban culture. Let's now ask ourselves, was there enough information in the passage about politics to justify that answer? Or was there more about urban culture? If you picked the second option, you are correct. The focus of this passage is how the culture in Manchester changed and why people still look at it the same way despite modern changes. Therefore, historians of urban culture is the right answer. Let's move on to the next question. Though. Of the following passage assertions, which one is the least supported by evidence or an example in the passage? Right off the bat, we can tell that the correct answer should not have any concrete examples backing it. The answer choices are, Manchester is no longer a working class city, Manchester's cultural industries have hired too few minority employees, popular music helped change how Manchester was perceived, and living in the centre of Manchester has become expensive. To solve the correct answer, the easier approach would be to eliminate the statements that are supposed to be supported by evidence or an example. For option A, it's supported by paragraph 6, since the author supports the claim that Manchester is no longer a working class city by explaining the process of gentrification and concrete locations such as the Hacienda being demolished by property developers. For option B, this point was talked about in paragraph 4 as one of the possible explanations for why Manchester's reputation has stayed the same. But there aren't actually any concrete references to specific companies that haven't hired a lot of minority employees. It just says that minorities are underrepresented in cultural industries, so this could be the right answer. For option C, this is clearly supported by paragraph 2 with the reference to Joy Division and how similar bands change Manchester's reputation. For option D, this is also clearly supported in paragraph 5, where the author compares Soho to the city center of Manchester. That leaves us with option B as the right answer. Question 3 is an interesting one. It asks which of the following situations would be the best example of how Manchester's cultural industries embraced its working class culture. The options are the use of the city's freight railways in the backgrounds of paintings by Manchester artists, the technological innovations that helped Manchester factories modernize, the creation of a city agency tasked with encouraging movie studios to film movies in rural Manchester, and the demolition of old warehouses to make room for new city parks. Again, B and D are unrelated to what the question is asking, as we don't see anything related to culture. So between A and C, A seems like a better answer because it shows how the freight railways are being used, a representation of the working class, in the background of paintings by Manchester artists representing their cultural industry. For question 4, it says based on the fifth paragraph of the passage, with which of the following statements would the author be most likely to agree? Even before we read the answer choices, let's familiarize ourselves with only the content of paragraph 5, which talked about how city centre Manchester became expensive due to wealthy individuals moving in and pushing out artists. Once we've done that, we can move on to the answer choices. A is New York Soho also embraced its working class culture, B is Manchester has not created new housing stock in some time, C is creating cool art does not necessarily pay well. D is Soho pop cultural entrepreneurs hire few women. 
Immediately, we can cross out B and D because in that fifth paragraph, housing stock and hiring women are not discussed at all. That leaves us with A and C. To choose between the two, let's assume that the statements are true. For A, if Soho actually did embrace its working class culture, would it make sense for working class artists to be driven out of the city? Probably not. That leaves us with creating cool art does not necessarily pay well. The paragraph actually says that the artists could not, no longer afford to live there, so it's safe to assume that they weren't being paid enough, meaning C is probably correct. Question 5 asks, according to the author, the general effect of more working class people finding jobs in media industries is. The options are increases in the rate of production of music, film, and television, new ways of looking at working class culture, an increase in the wealth in the cities that these people live in, and a decrease in the amount of affordable housing. C and D are true, but they're not explicitly mentioned in the passage. A can also be true, but even though the passage says that by having more working class individuals, there will be more representation, it doesn't say that the rate of production will increase. B is the right answer because there's evidence for this right in the passage. If you look at paragraph one, it says that there are more working class individuals in the media, then there will be an altered perception of working class culture. <laughs> we know the video is getting really long, but trust me, we're at the last question. Suppose the authors were asked to advise the Manchester City Council about how it could change the city's reputation. Now, based on the passage, the author would probably recommend investing in more factories to increase the working class population, investing less in cultural industries like music and movies, encouraging wealthy homeowners to purchase homes outside of the city center, and encouraging cultural industries to, to diversify its employee population. Now, this is not common, but for this question, there is an obvious answer. Let's go through the wrong answers first. Investing more in factories would not do anything to change the city's reputation, so that's the wrong answer. Investing less in cultural industries is unrelated and never mentioned in the passage as well. C could be the answer because it would stop gentrification, but it would not directly affect the reputation. So therefore, D is the right answer because it is one of the two things that caused the stagnation of Manchester's reputation. And that brings us to the end of the video. We hope this showed you what goes through our minds when we actually do a Cars passage. And if you found these to be super helpful, be sure to drop a comment below to let us know that we should keep doing these types of analysis videos. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe and see you guys in the next one.